this season. They hope exciting quarterback Robert Hall finds plenty of open receivers like sure-handed Lloyd Hill. And powerful back Bam Morris continues to run over helpless defenders. If things work out, there'll be lots of joy ahead for Lubbock's favorites. Today, the Red Raiders travel far from home to Oregon as West Texas meets the Pacific Northwest on Raycon. the Exxon Southwest Conference Game of the Week. Brought to you by Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. For high performance, rely on the Tiger. And brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. By Nations Bank. By Dr. Pepper and by Bud Drive. We are at Autzen Stadium near the campus of the University of Oregon in Eugene for only the second meeting ever between the Red Raiders of Texas Tech and the Ducks of the University of Oregon. Dave Barnett welcoming you to Eugene. Fair warning as we uh, come to you today from the Pacific Northwest. Our last three telecasts have ended with an average final score of 53 to 43. With me again is a former All-Pro Dave Rowe. Any game involving Texas Tech has the potential of finishing just like those. It certainly does, Ted. With the Texas Tech as the three best skilled players, I think as a group in the Southwest Conference, Dave, that starts with Bam Morris. He was a third-team fullback last year. They moved him to I-back, and he started off with a 5.8 yards per carry. Then you go to the aerial attack of Robert Hall, six victories in his last eight games. He's a great leader on the football field. And the other part of that aerial attack is Lloyd Hill, and it's a healthy Lloyd Hill, and I want to emphasize that because he's healthy this year. Last week, he had 12 catches for 222 yards. Now, as we saw last year against Houston, you have got to score points. Houston scored 46 and lost the game. If you're going to beat Texas Tech, you have got to outscore them. Well, their defense again this year giving up a lot of yards, a lot of points after their first two games, but they do have Tracy Saul back there. Oh, what a leader that young man is on defense. Every team has a player that sets the tone, and Tracy Saul is that player on defense for Texas Tech. This Oregon team uh, comes in with the longest current losing streak in Division I, eight straight. They won only once since this game a year ago. They have uh, probably the worst injury luck of any program in America the last couple of years. Well, they call it here. They even have a name for it. They call it bad duck luck. And they're hoping that bad duck luck is over. And if it's going to be over, it's got to start with Danny O'Neill, their quarterback. Last year, he rolled into Texas Tech, and what a day he had. 19 of 35, 292 yards. He passed for four touchdowns. They're hoping they can pick up where he left off last year. A visit to Austin Stadium today, kind of like being in Toon Land, because you've got from Texas Tech, Raider Red, and you've got the fighting duck of Oregon. We'll be back in a moment. Hammett Valley in Western Oregon. Red Raiders and the Ducks are just minutes away from their second meeting ever as we check our Southwest Airlines team must. First of all, for the Oregon Ducks, what do they have to do to pull this upset today? Well, Dave, in 52 of their last, last 60 games, the team that had was even or ahead in turnovers won the battle. Last year, Danny O'Neill's finest hour when he completed 19 of 35 passes. They're hoping he picks up for that. And Oregon has allowed almost 500 yards rushing in only their first two games. On the other hand, Texas Tech opening with a loss at home to Oklahoma, and then Spike Dykes got him to turn it around big in the second half in their win over Wyoming last week. Their Southwest Airlines bus. Well, every time Bam Mara scores a touchdown, Texas Tech wins, so they're hoping that will continue. Tech needs to continue going deep to Lloyd Hill. Last week, 12 catches, 222 yards, and you have to challenge pass receivers. Allowing 66% completions won't win you many close ball games. Those are our Southwest Airlines team must, and we'll return with the opening kickoff from Eugene in a moment. In Fort 41,000, they expect about three-quarters capacity on a 
perfect day for football. 73 degrees. It won't get uh, much higher than 80, they don't think. Just a slight northerly breeze and partly cloudy skies. Omni turf, the surface here at Autzen Stadium. Very spongy with a layer of sand underneath. And deep receiving for Oregon. Sean Burwell, 21, and Donovan Moore, 22. As the Red Raiders with John Davis kick it off, and we're underway. And it'll roll to Burwell at the nine. Right up the middle, Davis giving chase. Anthony Wiley giving chase, and he grabs him at the 32-yard line. Dave, when you're covering a kickoff, you cannot come all down in one wave. If you make that little crack and you don't make him change direction, he finds the seam and breaks through it. Watch the Texas Tech players as they come down. They're all down there together. Now, there's going to be the seam right in the middle. There's the seam. He breaks back. Wiley doesn't run him down, and I want to tell you, this young man really ran him down. That's a great effort there by Wiley, Wiley on the outside. 59 yards to set up the Ducks first and 10 from the Red Raider 32 and Danny O'Neill with only Burwell in the backfield. The give to Sean Burwell has got to be a little winded after that opening kick return and he spins for about four yards into the tackle of Quincy White. The Red Raider inside linebacker O'Neill just a sophomore New Point Beach California product. 6'2 and 178 great tools he has had inconsistent uh, play especially mentally they had to bench him against Stanford last week when he forgot a play they just called from the sideline for fourth down five yards officially for Burwell and it's second and five and there's big yardage for Ricky Whittle and a fumble after he's down at the 20 it remains duck ball and a flag is down as well Whittle who gave Burwell a breather if the play stands for Oregon, we'll have first down and 10 just inside the Raider 20-yard line. Jim Springer, our referee today. First no foul, defense, half the distance to the goal line, first down. Boy, this is not exactly the way Spike Dykes would have scripted the opening to this game. No, when you win the toss and you defer, you're hoping your defense will go out and stop them. Let's watch the tail end of this play now. See if the ball comes loose, starts to come loose. There's the hit. Now that must be, there's the hit in the tail end that they called the personal foul. The ball was, he was already down, so that's not a fumble. That's tacked on the personal foul on the end of that run. Looked like Ben Kirkpatrick. Half the distance to the goal to mark off. As we check our Nations Bank starting lineup for the Oregon offense. Sean Burwell, as you've already seen, Juan Shedrick is the fullback. Tight end is Vince Ferry. Fastest receiver on the team is Ronnie Harris. Derek Deadweiler, however, probably their best at big plays with the blockers up front. And the Ducks looking at a first and 10. They mark it at the 10 yard line. This will be first down and goal to go for O'Neill and the Ducks. And in the offset eye, Shedrick now into the fullback slot. And they go from the eye. Burwell back in, rumbles for three or four down to the six, where Steve Hoffman at nose tackle makes the stop. Let's check the Raider defense with Dias, Gaines, and Jackson. Jackson may be an all conference performer this year. Lissio, Field, White, and Kirkpatrick are the linebackers with the All American Tracy Saul, the conference's all time interception leader, heading up the secondary. And those are our nation's bank starting defensive players for the Red Raiders today under the gun in the first couple of minutes after the 59 yard opening kickoff return by Sean Burwell first and goal now they say from the six as Burwell dragged down for a loss back at the 11 by Brady Field who is replacing the injured Steve Carr Dave, this has been one of the criticisms of the Ducks offense is that once they get inside the 20, which they call the red zone, it's four downs for the touchdown, they seem to bog down. They do not play well. Everybody will tell you that they run up and down the field from 20 to 20. Now, the reason that was first down, they, they ruled after the penalty they needed inches, so that was actually first and inches prior to that play. Now second and goal, but they're back at the 11th. 
And he'll play action. O'Neal swinging to Burwell. Out of the backfield to the three. And the Red Raider who saved the touchdown was Anthony Wiley from left cornerback as it looked as if Burwell had the alley to take that one on in. This is a running screen. What you do is you start a man in motion, now fake, and now he catches him. On the screen, you see the lineman out in front of him. He gets a nice block there, cuts back inside, but Wiley, in his pursuit down the line, stops the touchdown. So this really becomes a key play. Third and goal from the three for a down program. Eight straight losses, the longest current losing streak in Division I. And a team that is not accustomed to early leads or late leads, for that matter. O'Neal again for Burwell. He will get stuck at the four by Saul. He read it perfectly from free safety. Big players make big plays, and that's what Tracy Saul just did for this Texas Tech defense. They needed something like that, something to spur them. And Saul reacted from the safety spots. Watch him, number six. Watch this place. It's perfect. Catches the ball, turns around. Bam. That's a big-time hit. They give him progress to the three. So officially no gain. And on fourth down after the saving tackle by Saul, Tommy Thompson is on to attempt a 20-yard Oregon field goal. This has a very acute angle to the left out of the hold of Doug Musgrave. And Thompson is good. All Sean Burwell on the opening possession of the game for the Oregon Ducks who lead the Raiders 3-0. for a special occasion to fly. We'd like to remind you they happen every day. Southwest Airlines Senior Fares for people 65 and over. Fully refundable fares to every one of Southwest Airlines scheduled destinations. Every day of the year. Here it comes. Don't you love that lucky feeling? Oh, it's fun. To anticipate that feeling, it could happen any minute. You could be the one to win it when you play the game of Texas. Here's the fun. Can you imagine what it's really like to win a million dollars? Well, you just might find out in the Texas Lottery's new Lone Star Millionaire game. You could win up to $5,000 instantly or a million dollars in one of the grand prize drawings. If you want a beer that drinks easy like a light and has real draft taste, why not make a change? for the better. Refreshingly different, but dry. Bud Dry is one beer that drinks easy like a light and has real draft taste. So why not come around to something refreshingly different? Try Bud Dry. Well, the Red Raiders for the second consecutive week are burned by a big kick return. Wyoming last week Popped a 58-yarder, Burwell 59 with the opening kick in this game, and it sets up Tommy Thompson's field goal. Shaw back awaiting the kick from Thompson, who handles all the kicking and punting for Oregon. And with a little breeze more behind him than against him, it's down to Alton Crane from the two, and he'll not get much. Only the 11. This Oregon crowd has had precious little to get fired up about over the last year, so they're enjoying this. Michael Allison made the tackle for the Ducks, and Robert Hall brings the Red Raider offensive attack on. The junior from Dallas Carter, whose arm strength belies his size. You'd never think a guy six feet 170 would be able to gun it the way he does. Kind of defies physics. And he may be the best quarterback of the Southwest Conference this year. Pitch on first down to Byron Bam Morris. Driven back possibly for a loss. With the first duck arriving, Ernest Jones, the right outside linebacker. The offense looks this way for the Red Raiders. Their nation's bank starting skill folks with Bam Morris and Bruce Hill in the I formation. Scott Ayler, the tight end. Donald Marshall. And Lloyd Hill, second in the nation after two games in receiving. Patrick, Labai, and Biggers heading the up front people. 
Morris officially lost two. Hall dangerous on the roll, but hemmed in this time. And the fans will obviously look and finally get the flag, a very late flag for what's got to be intentional grounding. I'm not sure why he tossed that. Might as well settle for the no gain and go for third down. I had no idea either. He was almost out of bounds when he just flipped the ball upfield. There was no receiver anywhere within 10, 15 yards. That is a serious mistake. Intentional grounding, offense, five yards from the spot of the pass, loss of down. Third down. That's loss of down. That also, if you look at a punting situation, protect will back them up even deeper into their own end zone. Now there's no one in his picture here. Now right at the end, he just flips it upfield. I have no idea why he flipped it in that position. You're just going to run out of bounds. Take you're, you're going to run to the line of scrimmage, so you're not going to get a loss. He loses both the down and the play. Dyke saw the Ducks pull the upset in Lubbock. 28-13 one year ago and they start with a 3-0 lead and the Raiders deep in trouble. Very conservative call to Morris into the clear and Bam Morris is going to be very close for a first down. How about that on third and 17? Morris is amazing. He has got great balance for his size. It's amazing the balance he has. He's 6'1", 235 pounds, and he spins. He comes off of plays. He just does not go down easy. The Oregon defense, like the Red Raiders, running from the 3-4, their linebackers, Edwards, Tomo Piao, Farwell, a great one, and Jones. The secondary with Molden, O'Berry, Cota, and the returning all-American free safety Eric Castle who was back a couple of weeks earlier than they thought after about with Mono. I think he may go for it. It's fourth down. Well they measured about a length of the ball short. I can't believe he's going to go for it. Well what you try to do in this situation sometimes you try to draw him off sides. That may be the play in here but when you've got somebody like Morris back there you can hand it to him. Hey, it worked. It worked. <laughs> Unbelievable. You can see Robert Hall when he came up to the line. He started looking around. All of a sudden, he started emphasizing that first count. He drew him off sides, and nothing will make a coach madder than that. Rick Brooks does not like mistakes. He is, he's got to be just livid over that. One. Well, and he's just seen too many. This is how you have an eight game losing streak. You make mental mistakes like this one by Romeo Bandison, the nose guard. Did you see all the offensive linemen clapping their hands? They love to draw you off in that situation. And look at Brooks. See, he's saying that what he's saying is that Paul emphasized him. His, his movement drew him off sides. So, first down, play action, and Hall. Will settle short for Hill, the fullback. Not much, if anything, for Bruce Hill. They may mark him for a loss of one. A swarming duck defense. Led by Alex Molden up from left corner. Hill not called on all that often to do much pass catching. Junior from Trimble Tech High School in Fort Worth, the same high school that produced James Gray not long ago. Well, one of the situations that's developing in this game early is that they're not doubling Lloyd Hill. They can put him on the outside and go one on one. There's nobody can stay with him. Still on the ground, Morris looking outside and not much cutback room. Farwell, their leading tackler the last two years, bidding this year to be the first to lead in that category in three consecutive seasons. So another third down. Well, a senior from Los Gatos, California. Really undersized, 6'2", 210. There's what he's trying to pull off this year. From their 30-yard line, Red Raiders look at third and officially a long six or a short seven, we'll call it. Hill with good protection. And finds Lloyd Hill for the first time and a first down. Paul to Hill. The combination that clicked for 12 Hill receptions against Wyoming last week. And that play was about one yard from going all the way. When Hill catches this ball and he turns around, 
He fakes out the defensive corner. And this is just one-on-one. -on -one. Fake him back, come back inside. That's Molden. He just beats him. And look at this. One yard wider, and he's down the sideline. Well, the obvious question for Brooks this week is, how do you guard this guy? How do you defend him? You see, we can't possibly double him all the time. The Raiders won't allow it. They stretch defenses too much. And Moore is trying the near side this time. And a good job by the Ducks stretching their defensive pursuit. Molden all the way from cornerback to bring down Byron Van Morris. Well, when talking with the Texas Tech coaches, they felt they could attack at the tackle position running. But if you bounce that play outside, then Bam Marsh loses his strength because his strength is bull rushing up through the middle, making that big play, fumbling, you know, just kind of bumping off somebody and getting his balance and getting an extra four or five yards. Golden shouldn't be big enough to bring down Morris the way he did, but he pulled it off. Pump fake, good low catch by Morris. Gang tackled at the 48, and again the Raiders look at third and at least five yards. Derek Castle up from free safety, joined by DJ Cabrera from left end. And the Ducks really hoping that they would get an emotional lift from the return of Castle that had so much bad luck. Here's an All-American and Castle struck by, of all things, mononucleosis, but he came back a good bit earlier than expected. And they're just going to see how long he can go, what his strength level is today. Ball changing the play at the line on third and five. And the toss for the first down catch for Daryl Mitchell. Ball pass complete they will mark Mitchell. him at the Duck 44-yard line. And this is a very impressive first drive engineered by Robert Hall picking up three key third downs. Mitchell off a big game last week. You talked about Robert Hall's arm strength. I always look at his poise. This is the defensive secondary. That's not bad coverage. It's an out pattern. You're within a yard, but Hall throws it right where it has to be thrown for the first down. But I am really impressed with Robert Hall's generalmanship. He's a general on that field. He leads his team. Movement again. And no flags. Morris off right tackle. Now we've got a flag. As Morris reaches the 38, Farwell and Castle up for the stop. Boy, and if you're an offensive lineman, you hate to see a flag thrown in there because it's almost always holding. Holding indicated against the Red Raiders. It is going to hope for an offsides against the left defensive line for Oregon. Not the call that Dyke Scott. Holding. Offense, ten yards. It's kind of how this first drive has gone, up and back, and up and back, and they'll they'll go all the way back to their own 46-yard line. The line again for the first is the Oregon 33. So first and 20. And that really changes the complexion of your play selection. Now you almost have to pass. Morris up in a slot or hill it is and now in motion. Ball over the middle for his tight end Scott Ayler. First down to the 30. As Ayler the sophomore from Round Rock Texas makes his first grab. Of the year. Ayler did something really. It's a mark of a good receiver. He ran to the football rather than reaching out. He reached out the last second to, to get the football. A lot of receivers, you'll see him go downfield. Now, Ayler's right there in the, the middle of your screen. He's going to curl over. When the ball is thrown, he runs to the ball, and then at the last minute reaches out and catches it. You run a lot faster that way. Well, the first and 20 was no problem. First and 10, Hall for Hill stretches out, and did he grab it? Yes, at the two-yard line. A full layout for Lloyd Hill, first and goal, Red Raiders. Well, his first hand co contact with the ball stopped it. The second hand contact brought it in. That ball was overthrown. You're going to see Hill is going to be to the left of your screen. The first part, he touches it, and the ball comes loose again, and then he grabs it the second time. Watch this. Stretched out. There's the hands. Then he grabs it again as he comes in with it, brings it into his body. Tremendous catch. Well, Barry, the cornerback, really lucky that that ball by Hall was actually slightly overthrown if Hill gets it in stride at six points. 
flag on first and goal from the two. It'll be Scott Fitzgerald, the left guard move. Ball start, offense, five yards, repeat first down. Early mistakes by both teams. Well, one of the things that Tech did last week is they can they had 11 penalties, and that was one of the things that they worked on this week trying to eliminate. They haven't eliminated them on this drive, but they've driven the ball all the way from inside their own 10-yard line, so this is an outstanding drive. David first and goal from the seventh. After the mark-off, and a spin for a couple for Byron Miles. Backup fullback, a junior from Irving Nimitz. Right at the five-yard line. Raycom is pleased to welcome our viewers tuning in today on Prime Network and the nationwide family of Prime's regional sports cable networks from Austin Stadium in Eugene, Oregon. The Ducks return the opening kick, 59 yards, settled for a field goal, and the Raiders driving to go ahead with 5.23 to go in the first quarter. Ball to the end zone and through the hands of Ayler, who had beaten Castle to the deep corner. It'll be third and goal. Ayler just drops this football. It's a well-thrown ball. Hits them in a bad spot against the hands. He should have this football. It's a little bootleg out. Now he gets pressure. There's Ayler right in your screen. He's going to come right to you. Watch the hands. Hits him perfect. Just goes between his hands, and he had plenty of room. You would think maybe he was concentrated on keeping that foot inbounds, but you got to catch that football first. Castle, their version of Saul. Third and goal, and Hall Chase delivers an incomplete intended for Hill, almost stolen that time by Molden. And the penalty may end up costing the Red Raiders four points. That's if they're successful on the field goal try. Well, penalty in that situation, Dave, is so critical because it makes you pass the football. But watch Hall escape this pressure. And he still finds his wide out deep in the end zone. He overthrows the ball, but it was awfully close. Lynn Elliott has graduated, and fans of the Dallas Cowboys know he's made their club as a rookie. His replacement is John Davis, a sophomore from Brandon, Mississippi. Only his second try of the year. He missed his first attempt, and another flag is down. Now that's an interesting call down. because instead of hang, having that acute angle you move it back five yards and you've got a little bit of a better angle to kick from. I'm surprised the defense took that. Already five penalties. 40 yards and mark offs against Texas Tech. That Oregon one for five kept this drive alive. On the fourth down offsides call now a 27 yard effort by Davis. Mike Honeycutt's hold is good, and the kick is good for a tie score. Five minutes and seven seconds to go, and Eugene, it's 3-3. You've driven these streets a thousand times. But tonight, there's something different. Tonight, you're using Exxon 93 Supreme gasoline for a cleaner engine, smooth acceleration, and a full 93 octane. Let the tiger set you free. Rely on Exxon Supreme. Rely on the tiger. Tell you what we want to do. We want to find that dark night. We'll be looking for love. We'll be looking for love. All right, Rackin' with Johnny J. Here's a new one for you, my baby girl. It only takes a second for an accident to happen. Don't wreck your life. Check this out. Ouch! I'm sick of dating. You gotta fake it. So much madness, you just can't take it. Hey, don't go through this. I know what feels good. While the best things are. Full of John Davis with five minutes and seven seconds remaining in the first quarter. 
A penalty marred for both teams opening drive for the Red Raiders. It was a drive that Oregon could have easily stopped had they not had the offsides on fourth down. Raiders could be up 7 3. Had they not jumped offsides on first and goal at the two, the dribbler picked up from the 12 yard line by Donovan Moore to the 32. And the Ducks will start from there after the tackle by Chad Worley. This scoring drive, we've got a flag down on the return, by the way. The scoring drive for the Red Raiders, a back and forth piece of work, really 16 plays, 83 yards in a little over five minutes. Flag thrown at the spot of the tackle on the kick return. The 32 of Oregon. As the discussion continues. Personal foul. Defense. Dead ball. Personal foul. Offense. Penalties cancel. First down. That's a little bit of argument after the tackle. That's where they say, I bet you, I bet you don't like me and I don't like you. Kind of shovel each other a little bit, push. Well, it just doesn't hurt anything. Got to be really mixed emotions, doesn't it, if you're, if you're Dykes? You've seen half a dozen penalties already, but you've seen your team come from their own 12-yard line and uh, execute a pretty good sustained drive. Oregon first down with Shedrick shifting back into the I formation. And right up the middle, there is big room for eight yards for Burwell. They really haven't solved him at all. White and Kirkpatrick making the tackles. Burwell had a pretty big freshman year two years ago, 1,616 all-purpose yards. He rushed for a 969 total and caught 35 passes and was plagued by injuries, ankle problems, after the Tech game last year when he gained 111 yards. Second and two, Burwell again. Big hole, might have been stripped, and the Red Raiders say they've got it, and they do at the Duck 46-yard line. You can see the minute Burwell went through the line, he started to look back. That's a clear indication that the ball was stripped from him. Now who are they going to give it to? There's still been a mad scramble down there. Well, they've already signaled once for a Red Raider recovery. And the correct call, bottom of the pile, he got Sean Jackson on the recovery. At the Duck, 46-yard line. And when you run through a hole, you have got to put this football away. You can't get it just pulled out by an arm. Watch the hole. It's a trap on the outside. Boom, he comes right up there. And watch the little hands. You see the hand pull the ball out. Now look at him look back. The ball's gone. Scramble for it. Texas Tech recovers. Jackson caused it. Jackson recovered it. Full recovery of the year. Sean Jackson sets up the Red Raiders in Oregon Territory. 422 in the first quarter. Hall on play action. Away from pressure. And he's going to turn that into about a five-yard game. So with the great arm strength, he's got the great escapability as well. And our first check of the Dr. Pepper scoreboard. That uh, margin certainly a surprise, although Tennessee at home had to like their chances. That's a big surprise. USC wins at number 13, Oklahoma, 20 to 10. And in the Southwest Conference, how welcome is that final? Houston avenging their big loss at Illinois last year, 31-13. Florida State pounding NC State, 34-13. In a big ACC matchup, and Michigan has destroyed Oklahoma State. Mitchell in motion on second down. And Hill through the middle. Bruce Hill will be close for a first down near the 35-yard line. Farwell in on the tackle for Oregon. Georgia pounding hapless Cal State Fullerton in the fourth quarter. Likewise for Penn State, number 10 against Eastern Michigan in the fourth. And that one really tightened up. Auburn looked like they were headed toward a blowout. They settled for a two-point win over the LSU Tigers. That's surprising. That's shockingly tight in the third quarter in Columbia. Baylor, a loser to Colorado, but a shutout leader in the third quarter this week over Utah State. And number 15, UCLA, holding BYU to a field goal in the third quarter. 
Notre Dame off their tie with Michigan at Michigan State, sailing in the first. And we'll keep you updated throughout. It was a first down for Bruce Hill. Lloyd Hill, wide left, bottom of your screen. Mitchell, wide right, he's the target for Hall and deflected by Molden inside the five. One of the top four high school prospects in Colorado two years ago, a red shirt freshman. That is excellent coverage. You'll see Molden, he never looks back until the last second. Then he's concentrating on the ball, just puts the hand up and knocks the ball away, doesn't make contact with the receiver. That's what you want to do. Boy, already in just three games, Mitchell is becoming a favorite target of all. He's officially the backup for Donald Marshall, who has yet to have the ball thrown his way today. The other way to Hill. And met immediately, but still stretching, and he's going to be close for the first down. He needed the 25. He's going to be perhaps inches shy, if that, after the tackle by Eugene Jackson. Dave, one of the things that really helps a wide receiver is how quickly you make that plant. Now watch this play on Hill when he plants right there and he's turning out. See the defender still giving. He goes out of your picture. But Hill makes such a strong plant and turn that when he catches the ball, he's got two or three yards separation from the corner. Not really a good spot for the Raiders. They move it back to the 26, so it's third down. And they call on Bam. First down to the 23. Ernest Jones, the right outside linebacker, made the tackle. And Tech's got to figure anytime they need that little yardage, this guy will get it just by falling forward. A powerful 235 pound. What a great story about him. Last year he was kind of floating along as a third team fullback. Really no real promise. Had you know had the ability, but he wasn't doing anything. They moved him to that eye back position. He went from third team to first team. And what a rushing average he has this year. Coming in this game, five and 5.8 yards per carry. Straight drop this time for Hall. Bruce Hill, a good target early. And driven back from the 18. Well, that really gives you some offensive versatility when your fullback is that good a pass target. Salila Malapiai returning from an injury this week. Nose guard bringing down Hill. Everybody can catch. Hall's out there looking five. That's one of the things. If you're going to play college football today and you're going to be a running back, you have got to be able to catch. We saw that last week with Colorado. They said they have to stretch it up and down the field. The same thing is true of Texas Tech. One of five targets on any given play for Hall. Morris will try and stretch him out left side and not get much. In fact, he'll lose a couple as Castle followed him and drove him out near the 20. And what Oregon is doing is they're packing the line with players and forcing Morris to run wide. You'll see the number of players. Look, they're all sprinting out here. You see all the players there now force him out wide. When he starts to run wide, now you bring up the secondary. There's Castle. All he wants to do is get a shirt, get a hand on something, and drag him down. That's the way you defend Morris. Make him run wide. Another key third down for the Raiders inside the final minute of the first quarter. And Hall sacked at the 23 by Terrell Edwards. One of the problems on that play, this is a delay play. In other words, Hall takes the ball and he starts to look strong side and he's going to come back. Now watch him look to his right. He's going to come back to his left, but he doesn't have time. You see the pocket just collapses around him. But that's a look-off play. You're looking right, looking strong side. The last second, you come back to the weak side and find your wide receiver. Jeff Cummins, the defensive end, and Edwards combined on the sack, and that is the end of the first quarter. Davis will turn around and kick with a slight wind at his back when we begin the second quarter in Eugene, Oregon. Just lining up for a 40-yard effort. Eight mile an hour breeze at his back. He's good already on his first career field goal from 27. And this one is also good. 
Two for two for Davis, and the Red Raiders take their first lead of the afternoon. What a calm reaction. That surprised me. If I'm two for two, and I've just followed uh, Lynn Elliott, I'm going to say, wow, what a kick. But he doesn't. Good concentration, looks down, keeps his head there. When he gets it, he just puts his hands up and says, well, that's a good one, too. Well, of course, he was Elliott's understudy. And in watching such a steady performer as Elliott, he came away looking to this year saying, I hope I can be that calm, that collected, that even tempered. And you can see it on the reaction. Not too high, and he won't be too low when he misses. Let's look at our first quarter statistics with advantages for the Red Raiders in first down, big edge in passing yards and total yards. But they really hurt themselves with the five penalties. And look at time of possession. Ten minutes and 40 seconds to only four minutes and 20 seconds. That's a big factor. That was predominantly on that 83-yard drive. Davis to kick to Burwell and Moore. Much deeper this time, and Burwell will uh, settle for the touchback. And the Ducks will start from their 20. Kicking job looks like it's in good hands in Lubbock this year. Danny O'Neill, one of many injured Ducks last year. His high water mark for his career was the game in Lubbock when he tied a Dan Fouts school record with four touchdowns. And uh, from that point on, really for everybody that they needed to come through, it was all downhill. And he struggled to begin his sophomore year. Brooks says he's basically still immature, but he's very capable physically. After benching him briefly last week, brings him right back as the starter this week. Harris one in motion. And the give to Ricky Whittle, the backup tailback stacked up for no gain. Good pursuit by the Raiders, led by Brady Field from inside linebacker. Update from Columbia, Missouri, where the Tigers lead the Aggies in the third quarter. No one expected that to be close, much less Missouri by three. Notre Dame adding to their lead at uh, Lansing over Michigan State in the second quarter. It was no gain, second and ten. O'Neill play action with some room to keep. Tripped up, but they may give him the first. They'll mark him right on the 30. I want to ask you a question quickly. Why does Brady Field not have his name on the back of his jersey? He's the only player I see out there without his name. There he is, number 48. And you have to work your way up to that? <laughs> well, we're getting an answer. Even as we speak from our spotter, Kelly Robinson, the tech assistant to SID, says, uh, well, Steve Carr was supposed to have that job. Good enough. I'll accept that. <laughs> okay. Well, the way he's played this first half, I'd put his name on his jersey. Just enough for the first for O'Neill and Whittle rumbling for eight or nine yards. First contact from Quincy White, the senior from Midland Lee. Now, one of the problems that Tech is having in their front line is they're getting blocked, and there's no sin in getting blocked, but you can't stay blocked. You've got to shed those blocks. I looked at Stephen Gaines coming to the sideline, and he was upset with himself. When you lock into the offensive lineman, you've got to be able to control him and slip off him. And that's what Tech is not able to do. They give Whittle nine for a second and one. And why not try it again? First down, field with the tackle at the 43. This has got to be a shock for both teams. Oregon has had no semblance of a running game in their first two outings. They've averaged less than 74 yards per game on the ground against Hawaii at a three-point loss and Stanford in a 14-point loss. Now, this is what I mean. You see Lissio there. Now, he's, he's blocked off, but he got to get rid of him. And he gets driven right to the ground. Now, that, that's not what you want to do. Now, Lissio turns and says, hey, he was holding me. But you've got to be able to use that upper body arm strength and shed those blockers. Ricky Whittle again, squirting through what hole there was. It didn't look all that big, but it was big enough for five or six yards. Mark Thomas, the strong safety on the tackle. And the Ducks showing some surprising depth at tailback. They expect 
Big things from Burwell. Back healthy as a junior. Whittle, just a redshirt freshman out of Fresno, carried only four times for 16 yards in their first two games. He has already far surpassed that productivity here in the first half. Out of the Novak on second and five, O'Neill overthrows Whittle, and it'll be third down. Now that time, Lissio got rid of his block from the outside and got great pressure. You've got to be able to shed him, and he did that time. Let's see if we, perhaps we can see it. There's 91. That's Lissio on the watch. Hit into him, get rid of him, throw him away. Now pressure right down the line. You see the quarterback looking back at him. He just throws it out of bounds. Now they did make a switch in there. They changed Hoffman for Gaines in there because they wanted to come and tell. They wanted to come over the sideline, tell Gaines, "Hey, you've got to get rid of those blockers." They've done it. Now Gaines is back in. Well played to Whittle. Flag down Lissio. Not fooled for a minute. And that holding call is going to be on the center. That time, I wish you could have seen Gaines make that move. He hit in. You talk about shedding the block. He did it very quickly, got around. The only thing that Curran could do, Curran could do, was hold him. Perhaps we can see that. Well, I'll have to wait for the signal here. It was holding, of course. They're going to decline it, take fourth down, I think. Holding, offense, penalty is declined. Fourth down. But perhaps we can see it in the center, right in the, on the nose. Good shed of the block. You're inside now. You see the center just reaching around and holding, and trying to pull him down. That's holding. That's uh, that's about as obvious as it gets. That, that looked like Anthony Wiley on a corner blitz right up the middle that time. But that's a real compliment to the coaching staff to take a player out, tell him what's going wrong, put him right back in, and watch how quickly he makes the adjustments. Excellent kick by Tommy Thompson. Saul will let this one trickle into the end zone for a touchback. Thompson booms a 52-yarder, 11.29 to go in the first half, 6-3 Red Raiders. The precise works of art that need protection for all the ways you drive. That's why you should insist on Exxon Superflow motor oil. It coats metal parts to reduce startup friction, prevents harmful sludge buildup from short trips, and protects from the heat of highway driving. For advanced engine protection, rely on the Tiger. Exxon Superflow. For all the ways you drive. There's a change taking place across America. People are rediscovering the things that really matter. Caring for one another. Living a simpler life. The pleasures of home and family. These values have always been a part of the Farm Bureau tradition. And they're the reason people from every walk of life are turning to Farm Bureau for quality insurance protection. Home, auto, life, value. Helping you is what we do best. We always thought we knew a lot about Bud. Great taste, king of beers, that kind of stuff. But these guys... Budweiser? It speaks wood aged. Whoa! Naturally carbonated. Takes a long time to brew. Where'd they learn this stuff? Some brewmaster information pipeline? Long forgotten, perhaps? Deep in their collective subconscious? No, uh, I think it was on TV. Here comes the king, here comes the big number one. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Incorporated and is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the video or audio portions of this program without the express prior written consent of Raycom is forbidden. Paul looked deep, flagged down as he hits Ehlers tight end for an apparent gain of 10 to the 30. But where they threw it and the way the Ducks are reacting looks like holding will be the call. Boy, is it just me or has there been a flag on every other play? There's been so a lot far. of flags. Raiders are marching backward. I can tell you on the sideline, Mr. Spike Dykes is going crazy because you just do not want to see that. What happens is you're starting out on a 20-yard line. Your defense has just done a good job. You've got a little bit of momentum. Holding. Offense. Penalty half the distance from the spot of the foul. 
We see first what down. happens with the foul. It compounds your field position, just makes it worse. Look at him. You can tell when, when Spike is upset, you can tell the way he just kind of puts that head down, kind of shakes it a little bit. FYI, this is the third straight game for Tech with a non Southwest Conference officiating crew. Pac 10 crew today. Nice job again by the Ducks stringing out the running game. Classical Freeman, a true freshman from Fort Worth, unable to get around the far end that time, and they drop him at the 12. Our storyline Hall with a good start, a big edge in time of possession for. The Red Raiders and Davis is perfect on two of two field goals. O'Neill has only thrown three times. That's a surprise. Oregon has moved the ball pretty well on the ground. Their fumble led to a tech field goal, which looms large in a 6 3 game. Ball lucky that one wasn't stolen. He never should have let it go. It went right through the hands of Chad Cota, the strong safety. What a hit Hall took after he threw that football. You can see when you're running out here, you've got that pressure coming from backside. When he lets go of this ball, bam. Mark Sliman applying the pressure. This is big down. You've got to find someone. I would go to Hill in this situation. He's been on the outside, he's been single covered, and he's the kind of receiver that makes those fantastic catches. You've got better than a 50 50 chance when you throw it to Hill. Two catches so far today for Hill. For 36 yards. That's an 18 yard average. That's what they need on third down. Mike Honeycutt went in motion. Draw play. Freeman won't come near what they needed. And it'll be fourth and 12. Well, we already said once any opportunity this crowd gets to get excited and to get optimistic. They're going to do it because they have fallen on such hard times the last two years. Aggies regained the lead at Missouri, still third quarter. As the kick by Robert King, replacing the All American Mark Bounds this year, excellent to the 31. Ronnie Harris goes backwards on the return attempt, brought down by Damon Wickware. Boy, and again this year, the tech kicking game is in good hands, isn't it? When you punt that far and you get no return, that means you've got some flyers coming down the field to cover. Boy, Baylor rolling it up on Utah State. Well, the Bears opened 0 2 at home against non conference opponents for the first time since 1927, but they break into the W column in a big way this week. That punt good for 51 yards. Ducks from their own 31 yard line. And O'Neill chased by Lissio. Red Raiders. Force the incompletion in the general direction. I use the term very loosely. Lissio, uh, Derek Gedwell. Lissio again shed a good block. He's on the left of your screen. He's going to shed there, jump over top. It's not going to be cut. Again, getting good pressure. Now, I don't know that this wasn't uh, intentional grounding. There well, was nobody close hit. then. He got hit as oh, he <laughs> An interesting Lissio switching sides to his place in the strong side. Corner is giving about an eight yard pad, but they keep it on the ground. Burwell back in. Ian Whittle continue to alternate series by series at about four yards before another tackle by Quincy White is off to a strong start. Burwell 5'11, 190. Big play ability on a team that is starved for big play. Rich Brooks says we just got to have somebody step up. In eight consecutive losses, that hasn't happened. Oregon, 0 for 2 on third down attempts at each six. O'Neal, good protection. And complete over the middle, close for the first down, will be his tight end, Vince Ferry. Kirkpatrick had the coverage on Ferry, a good sized target at 6'4, 240. His fourth catch of the year is good for the first. And he gets a great spot on this one. At home, sometimes it, play, it pays to get that good spot, and he did that time. When he came down, it looked as if he came inside the 41 yard line, which would not have been a first down. Watch where he comes down with the football. And he catches it. His feet come down right there, and he comes right straight down. 
He's inside the 41-yard line. That's not a first down, but he gets a good mark. O'Neill play action and deep for Deadweiler. The stretching grab at the Raider 40. Deadweiler, like Burwell, a lot of big play capability, and he strikes for the first time this afternoon. Deadweiler gets great separation. Watch this pattern. Fake inside. He plants. The defensive secondary just plant. They, they cannot react to it. Saul finally gets over there and knock him out of bounds, but an excellent pattern. Deadweiler from San Diego, an interesting story that he redshirted after transferring from a junior college. They said he just flat was not ready to play major college ball, and they only blow the whistle after O'Neill uh, kept to the 34-yard line. A lot of confusion, and, and I think the Raiders thought there had been a whistle where there had been none. Well, what happened was the center saw the left end jump off sides, and and what he did is he just snapped the ball to this to the quarterback and the quarterback just took off. Now he sees there's someone offside to way to the right of your screen. You can't see it in there. And then he just runs the ball. That's a heads up play by the center you to know, snap the ball. You, you see a lot of teams try that and they, they don't carry it off. And that's, that's, oh, that's perfect. That's execution. a heads up play right there. First and five. Red Raider 34, eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. Back up by a six to three count. And Burwell is driven back from the 32 by Brady Field. Junior from Gaiman, Oklahoma, who finds himself in a key position having a replace car who uh, Dykes fears is probably out for the year with knee problems. Given the 31 yard line, it will be second and a long one. Just need the 30. Ricky Whittle back in for Burwell, bounces off Harry Dias, and then the reinforcements come, and they will lose as again Quincy White, who's in on about every other tackle, sticks his head in it. Well, you know, the two nose tackles that play for Tech. Hoffman and Gaines. That's Gaines. Excuse me. That's Hoffman, 74. Watch this. You just got to get low. You got to fight. He's got a double team, almost a triple team on him. You just got to hold your ground. Now Hoffman doesn't weigh as much as Gaines does. Gaines is 300 pounds, but you got to stay low in there. They're doubling the nose, pushing him out, and trapping to the outside. And it's making seams in that Tech offensive defensive line. Still one needed on third down. Ball on Riddle again, first down at the Tech 28. Where guess who? White made the tackle. Whittle made a nice adjustment on that run. That was designed to go off the guard, between the guard and the tackle. And as he was running, he saw it open up on the outside, made a nice adjustment to the outside to pick up the first down. There's a low center of gravity, 5'9", 180. Average 10 yards per carry two years ago as a high school senior in Fresno. Bucks on the march, first and 10, 640 and counting in the half. Out of the eye. O'Neill to the tight end Ferry and underthrown and incomplete. Ferry, who already has matched his catch total from all last year when he had four. Wide on the coverage, second and 10. You can see that time when O'Neill threw that ball, he knew he threw it wrong. He didn't lead him far enough. Ferry had a good run on the play. If he had thrown it up, that was a completion. Aren't you shocked this is six to three? I expect a big scoring game. Which it could still be. Long way to go. Draw play to Whittle. And Lissio, the first Raider to arrive for a loss to the 30. Boy, those two linebackers really standing up tall right now. Quincy White and Mike Lissio. And without car and with the departure last year Matt Wingo we, these two have got to do it every week for Tech. Well, watch on the outside when they make the the back turn the corner and then you get those white shirts quickly reacting to the football that's what that's the way you play a draw quick reaction so the Ducks look at another key third down 
by the game, the 18. All day for O'Neill, caught by Ronnie Harris, first down and more to the 11. Eighteen yards for the senior speedster from San Jose. Well, the quarterback's under no pressure this time. When O'Neal goes back there, no one's getting in his face. Everyone is staying blocked. You see Jackson on the outside. He's running now. O'Neal steps up in the pocket. There's no one around him. Now, this is the secondary drop. You see all it is is just a curl right across the middle, and he's wide open. What Springer was saying was a sideline warning to the Texas Tech bench. Which doesn't affect uh, the spot of the ball here. It's first and ten from the Raider 12-yard line. Ducks trying to regain the lead. Harris in motion. Still on the ground. Burwell got away from White. Driven out by Wiley. Inside the five. Every coach will tell you the longer you give life to a team that's down, the better they start to play. You want it if you're the team that's favored in a game, you want to get on top, control the game early. And that's not what Tech is doing. They're allowing Oregon to get some life. Pretty soon they're going to become believers if they stay in this football game. If they're not believers already. Well, Brooks said that in practices this week, whereas a lot of weeks in the past has been collective depression, kind of a grim determination was the move. You can see that pan out. Burwell, touchdown. This is a trap play. Down on the nose, kick out on the end, and it's just power football. You have got to shed those blocks. We, I sound like a broken record, but you cannot be trapped. Thompson for the extra point. Out of the hold of Musgrave. Five minutes, 23 seconds to go in the second quarter in Eugene, where the Ducks smell the end of their streak. They lead the Raiders 10 to 6. And we'll return after this from Southwest Airlines. On Southwest Airlines, friends fly free for business too. For example, if Dunn buys a ticket, Bradstreet flies free. Buy one round-trip ticket at Southwest Airlines' regular low, unrestricted fare, and your friend flies with you free. So if Bausch buys a ticket, Lom flies free. Or if Ben buys a ticket, Jerry flies free. Friends fly free for business. Only on Southwest Airlines, just plain smart. what it's really like to win a million dollars? Well, you just might find out in the Texas Lottery's new Lone Star Millionaire game. Just uncover the lucky star and you could be one of the million dollar winners. Diet Dr. Pepper tastes more like regular Dr. Pepper. There's no stopping the taste. With 100% NutraSweet. The game of the week is being brought to you by the 1992 Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team, the all-conference team that will be determined by you, the fans. Tommy Thompson to kick it. Into the breeze, a bit short to the eight yard line for Tracy Saul. And look out for Saul. 
Return to the 35-yard line. The tackle made by Jeremy Asher, just a freshman, but probably the best special teams hitter on this Oregon unit. And the Raiders go from there with 5.17 to go in the first half, coming from behind again. This is composure time for Robert Hall. Go out there, lead your team. Don't make a mistake. Don't fumble. Don't throw that foolish pass to the interception. Just take them down the field and score. Four wide receivers on first and ten. Mike Honey cut the motion man. Ball wants to go deep for Hill. Not covered. Big mistake. Goodbye. Touchdown, Lloyd Hill. Well, I didn't think it was going to happen that fast. <laughs> <laughs> Remember what Rich Brooks said about double teaming Lloyd Hill. He'd love to be able to do it on every play, but the Raiders scheme won't let you. They stretch him out with four wide outs. He finds the seam and he's gone. Watch this pass by Hall. Just lays it up perfect. Hill doesn't even have to break stride and no one's going to catch him from behind. That is a quick touchdown. One play drive. One play drive. Hall to Hill, <laughs> such as it was, for 65 yards. His second touchdown grab of 1992, and just like that, the Raiders back on top as John Davis adds the extra point. That didn't take long, did it? 5.08 remaining in the half, and it's the Red Raiders back on top by three. Obviously, these guys knew a lot about Bud, but was it possible they learned it all on TV? I think it was on TV. That Bud, that's beer. We watch TV. We've never seen this stuff. Budweiser beer, the king is second to none. Exclusive Beachwood aging gives you a taste and drinkability you find only in Budweiser. I mean, how could we have missed it? Oh, maybe you guys should get out more. crazy about the rodeo. He says he's crazy about me. I don't know. Maybe he's just plain crazy. Here's to rodeo cowboys, the women who love them, and cowboy cut jeans. Wrangler. In Fort Worth, a new pickup helped the Dixons turn weekend projects into profits. In Tyler, we helped the Mitchells put down roots in their neighborhood. And in Wichita Falls, a hatchback allowed Deborah Carver's son to start college with more than just new towels. Nations Bank loan specialists have helped people all across Texas with car loans, loan refinancing, and loans for home improvements. Come see how Nations Bank can give you the power to make a difference in your life. Hey, come on, Hey, Cena. got a nice feeling no, from right back to, to know that at any point Lloyd Hill can do what he just did with the perfect toss from Robert Hall. Well, that's the composure that I've seen Hall gain this year. Last year he came in those last six games, and he had an outstanding season the last six games. But this year you see him walk on the football field, and he knows that he's good. And he knows that he can strike from any distance. Just showed it again. And the Red Raiders up 13 to 10. Davis another good deep kick. Burwell will take this one from two yards back. He went up the middle with the opening kick and busted 159 yards and this time much better coverage only to the 24 where Zach Thomas led the assault for Texas Tech. Meanwhile the Aggies now in the fourth quarter carrying just a four point lead on Missouri. That one has never been close. That's rather shocking itself. Northwestern hanging in within four against number 18 Stanford. The Cardinal 21 to 7 winners over the Ducks last week in Palo Alto. Ducks having to come from behind again with 502 in the first half. They send Burwell in motion on first down and throw it to Deadweiler. Hoping to get a seam up the sideline. There was none. Anthony Wiley read it perfectly. It'll be second down. This is a slip screen. What you do is you have two receivers out there, and one actually comes back off the line and catches a lateral. So he's come off the line now, back up, and he actually catches a lateral. Now the up receiver is supposed to block. 
He does, but uh, not good enough to get a large gain, but about five yards on the play. Burwell missing the block that time for Deadweiler. A gain of five, second and five. Well play Whittle. Not a one tackle, not buried by Sean Jackson. At the 28 yard line. And Sean Jackson, you can see the adjustments that they're making on the sideline because that time when he saw the trap, he came down to meet the trap. He didn't allow the trap to come to him. Look for a face mask here. This is what you call holding, I think. Yeah, Quincy yes. White in his battle with David Collinsworth arguing for face masking and not getting it. <laughs> the official steps in and says, step back. No gain, third and five. <laughs> All day for O'Neill who cuts and runs, first down. Tech defensive line not causing many pressure problems for Danny O'Neill in this first half. You no, know, they're trying to do just what we used to call a bull rush, where you just grab into the offensive lineman and just push him straight back. You can see no one's getting any pressure. Breaks down on the on the right side and he scrambles out there for the first down. Now that will kill defensive linemen, and boy, do your secondary hate it. Because when he comes out there, if you're a Robert Hall and you come out there with that type of ability, you find those wide receivers downfield. Burwell tries to cut back, does so for about five or six. Tackled by Quincy White. Boy, he, he's going to be, I think, close to double-digit tackles in his first half. He has been extremely accurate. And ben Kirkpatrick, 47. He's going to try to turn the play in. He comes up to meet him, but he's really right there. He's almost catching him. You see him giving yardage, trying. He turns his back. You never turn your back on the play. Play cuts back inside him, and they pick up five yards. Baylor continues to march. Stanford adds a touchdown up 11 at halftime now in Palo Alto. O'Neill trying to get uh, an audible call. Will not have time with the snap clock down to one second. He will burn the first time out of the day for the Oregon Ducks. Second quarter score for One thing that the Raiders did extremely well after struggling a long time with Wyoming last week was make defensive adjustments. And I'm sure that's what they're going to do in the locker room. What you need, what they need to do is they need to tell their defensive linemen, okay, stay strong up front. And then you need to tell your two inside linebackers, White and Field, that if you see a trap play, you step up through the line. Don't try to run along the line, because you'll make more tackles by coming up through the line. You need the outside backers to turn it in. So it's a coordination. They have, they've got to make some adjustments because Oregon is not that great a rushing team and they are controlling the ball on the on the ground against Tech. Here's how out of proportion they had been in their first two games on offense. 73 and a half yards they average rushing 252. They average passing and Brooks said this way we got to get some more balance. We got to pass off the establishment of a running game and they're doing it. Coming up at halftime we'll look at this week's candidates for the Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team. We visit with Dr. Bob Swayze. The uh, Southwest Conference faculty representative for Tech. We meet today's classroom champion. All this plus first half highlights and statistics at halftime. Spinning forward to the 47 is Burwell. Bring up third and two or three for Oregon. Clock rolls 312 and counting in the half. Eight of four, third down one. One injury report from that Oregon sideline already. Paul Jensen. Will not return with a head injury. O'Neill gets the plays from Brooks, who signals him in from the side. Four for six, converting third downs. They need a long one here. And struggling to get just back to the line of scrimmage that time. And what Texas Tech did is they brought in their goal line defense. I saw both Hoffman and Gaines, both nose tackles in there. That's short yardage goal line defense. They did a good job of getting good penetration. And it looked as if O'Neill came up short. Well, he's definitely short, and the fans 
are going to get what they're calling for, going for it on fourth and one needed with 2.05 in the first half in their own end of the field. And this will be very close. Ricky Whittle tried to launch himself at the line and dive forward. He got undercut by White. And Donnie Brooks right there signaling he didn't get enough. And the way they mark it, he didn't. He didn't really come all that close. I watched White that time when he came in. He knifed underneath him and knocked his feet out. When he fell forward, he was on his way down. I don't think he got it either. And I'm not, I'm not even sure if you need a measurement. Well, it was great penetration by Quincy White on that play. Now, I know everybody wants you to go for it, but with, with two minutes left in the first half, you give the opponent great field position. You're, they're in this football. Oregon is in this football game only down by three points, and now you're going to give them the ball inside your own 50-yard line? That's not smart football. That's a, that's a gamble, though, that a coach who hadn't lost eight straight might not take. And perhaps we can see this line surge. Tech did a good job getting penetration. Watch 42. He's right in the middle of your screen. He knifes through and knocks the feet out right there. You can see him come down. You see him there's gain 77 on top. 95 is Dias. They get good penetration up front. And 42, Quincy White. He's the one who just knocks the feet out from under him. Plenty of time for Hall to go to work. And on the draw play, Morris bites off a nice chunk to the 41. Clock rolling, a minute 48 and counting. The Red Raiders have all three of their timeouts left and a chance to add to a 13 to 10 advantage. And Dave, teams practice this. There is a special time each week when teams practice what they call the two-minute drill, running the ball 40, 50 yards, and at least getting a field goal try. Inside 90 seconds in the half. Good protection for Hall. This one will be picked off by O'Berry. Herman O'Berry to the 32. On a pass intended and badly underthrown for Tony Miller. And if Hall has had a bad tendency in his first half, it's to throw into coverage. He, he was lucky he didn't have one picked off in the last series by Coda. And this time, it uh, it does happen for the Duck defense. Well, he's he's zeroed in on his receiver, and he doesn't see Molden out there. Molden, number, it was in that yeah. Obear. You're right. Yeah, it was Molden, number one, and Molden is just playing like a center fielder. He's reading the quarterback's eyes. He reacts over to the play, and he makes a good interception to give the ball back to Oregon. A minute 17 for the Ducks to work with, and O'Neill wants to strike immediately through the air. He's got his tight end ferry. Ball got knocked loose. Raiders say, what about a fumble? And the linesman uh, right there immediately signaled he was down and no fumble at the 40 as we hit the one minute mark. Oregon still with two timeouts. May burn one here. There may be a player down that play, Dave. Well, it's Ferry right after his catch, who was down at the 40 yard line. Stops the clock with 55 seconds. All over in Athens, Georgia, as the Bulldogs toss the shutout in a big way at Cal State Fullerton. The Aggies now in the fourth quarter enjoying a 10 point lead after trailing 13 to 10 in the third. Florida AM, however, trailing in their battle in Miami against the number one team in the nation. That's the game where uh, a lot of the proceeds are going to help the hurricane victims in South Florida. Barry making his way to his feet very slowly. Senior from Granada Hills, California, appears to be okay. If you're Danny O'Neill for, for Oregon, what you want to do in this situation, you've got your timeouts, you've got two timeouts left, you've got a minute on the clock, that's a lot of time. You can run a couple deep patterns. You can pick up a couple first downs. Use your timeouts wisely. And we'll see what kind of leadership he has on this drive. How well does he use the clock? They add, uh, as you can see, a few seconds and make it an even minute to play. Second and two for the Ducks. Harris wide right. 
Anthony Jones and Derek Edweiler are wide left and on the draw play Burwell to the 48. Tackled by Sean Jackson. Clock stopping at 48 seconds on the first down. Clock management interesting at this point because they've been so successful on the ground. They, they would like a couple more like that. And they do have two timeouts, so they don't have to do it all through the air. Over the middle for Harris. 31 attack with 35 seconds. Harris's second big catch of the day. 23 yarder. And you have got to be thinking pressure on the quarterback, but there is none. Tech's electing to, to rush three rushers. They're all being blocked. There's no penetration up the middle. And O'Neill has got the time to sit back there and just look downfield, look downfield, and find the open man. From just outside the Tech 30 first down. And finally some pressure, but he got away from Dias and airs it out way over Harris. They made it up as they went that time. Harris cutting back as O'Neill thought he decided to go deep to the end zone. There's a flag down at the 24-yard line. Well, there was an offensive lineman. Must have been 15 or 20 yards downfield. For what reason, I don't know, but he was wide open. <laughs> <laughs> Ineligible receiver the call with 23 seconds. That was a late flag. The official looked over and said, what are you doing down there? So from the 30. Ineligible receiver downfield offense. Five yards. Repeat first down. Back to the 35 and first down and 15 with 23 seconds. And now for Tech, they've got to get that pass rush up the middle, do a stunt, do a little game with those two tackles. See if you can get some penetration up there, force O'Neill out of the pocket. Two wideouts left. Harris alone, top of your screen. And uncovered is Willie Tate, the third team tight end. They will mark him out of bounds just shy of the first down at the 21. Tech did get the good penetration up in the middle, but that's a tough, what they call a tight end sneak. The tight end stays on the line. Now, once it's blocked, see him come all the way across on the bottom of your screen. No one's near him. He, he comes off the line. He actually looks like he's blocking. Then he comes off the line after the secondary drops, and he's wide open. First catch of the year for the sophomore from Elk Grove, California. And they need one on second down with 16 seconds in the half. They'll call on Burwell. He'll get it at maybe six. With 10 seconds to go, they call time. After Burwell's big carry to the Red Raider two-yard line. This is just a burst up the middle by Burwell. Everybody's blocked, looking good cut back against the grain. And he just bursts up the middle. Tech was lucky they stopped him on this play because he was touchdown bound. Now the decision is with 10 seconds, you've got at least two passes. But you cannot complete it anywhere except in the end zone. One timeout, all that is left in this half for the Ducks. A down program goes for six. I mean, well, with 10 seconds to go, you might only have one attempt to pass, and then you think about three, unless you're Oregon and you lost eight straight. You might just go ahead and well, at least think about two shots into the end zone, or do you settle for the tie, if I, that's what it takes? I think what you do in this situation is you take the ball back, you look quickly to see if someone's open. If they're not open, just throw the ball down, stop the clock. You just can't take that time where you start to come out of the pocket and decide to run. It's got to be two quick passes. Two tight ends. Running set on first and goal. And O'Neill trips and will be touched at the seven-yard line with five with four seconds. They finally stop the clock. And is that the picture of a down program? Yeah, the coaches stand on the sideline. They pull out their hair on, on plays like that. And they go, good night. I cannot believe it. But all he did, it looked as if he may have tripped just on the turf or he may have gotten stepped on by the center. 
But he just falls right back and he's down right there. That was going to be a pass play. Their first play at Stanford in their game last week. Ronnie Harris breaks wide open. It's going to be 7 0. Oregon trips over his own two feet. The ball bangs off his helmet. That's how you lose eight straight. This is not an easy kick from that hash mark position. That's that's a tough kick because the angle is such that it's it's a narrower than normal goalpost. You can see O'Neill's reaction to that. I can't believe that I tripped. You see, there's the angle that we're going to show. The ball is way over here to the left on the hash mark. So he's going to kick from about probably around the 15-yard line. Thompson, who earlier in the first half had his first career field goal. That was from 20. This one from 23. With that sharp angle to the right. And he's good. Still one second in the first half as the Ducks tie it at 13. But they've got to feel the way they probably felt after their first drive when they had the big return and settled for three. This time they're definitely thinking about cashing it in for six. And O'Neill trips over his own two feet. It looked like he might have been stepped on by the center, but it looked like, uh, judging from his reaction, that he was putting it all on yeah, himself. Absolutely. Now, if you're if you're in Oregon, what you want to do is you want to squib this ball. You do not want to set up a tech return, especially when you have Tracy Saul back there returning. So what you want to do is you want to just kick like an, an onside kick or something along that line. Just kind of squib it through the line. Don't kick it far. Don't kick it deep. That's what I would do. Watch him blast. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Dykes goes ahead and sends Saul and Crane back to the goal line just in case. You're right, and they blast it. But, but how many times are you right, really? <laughs> 20 yard line for the Red Raider return. Marcus Coleman, and that will be the end of the first half. The Red Raiders 13 and the Ducks 13 at Autzen Stadium in Eugene, Oregon in the Exxon Southwest Conference Game of the Week. The Game of the Week is brought to you by your Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon's Phase 4 gasoline and Super Flow motor oil. By Budweiser, remember friends know when to say when. By Wrangler. By the Texas Lottery. And remember, drive some 32 plays. And for all that, I guess in some ways I gotta be glad that it's only 13-13. That's 13, exactly 13. right. If you're the coach on uh, Texas Tech, you're saying, thank goodness we're not behind in this football game. Because when you run only six plays in a quarter, you're not controlling the football, obviously. Now, a week ago, after struggling for a long time with an underdog Wyoming team, Carlos Maynard, the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, made some strong adjustments, and they rolled in the second half. What adjustments do you think he's talking about here? Well, I think I think the adjustments that he's going to make is with his offensive line and his linebackers. He's got to have those two inside linebackers step up through the line and make those tackles. You cannot play a trap play down along the line because the back will cut up inside, and they're picking up big yardage with it. This is not a strong Oregon running team, but they're looking like it today. Let's check our first time highlights. They're brought to you by the Texas Lottery. And we'll begin with Sean Burwell's Oregon touchdown. This made it 10 to 6 Ducks. And this is one of those trap plays, and you can see the linebackers getting blown off the line, and he bursts in for the score. Well, it kicked off. Raiders took it from their 35. And here's what happened. Yeah, they find Hill downfield. And Hill's been open a lot today. This is a very well ball thrown ball. Very high. Just comes right in. He catches it right in stride, and no one's going to catch him. I would look for them to do a lot more of that in the second half because no one is guarding Hill closely. Back came the Ducks. They were set up. Goal to go from the Raider 2. And Danny O'Neill trips over himself. 
They had plenty of time to run two plays, but when he falls down, that lowers the clock down to just a couple seconds. Now they have to settle for the field goal. And because of that, Brooks has got to pump him right back up emotionally at halftime, doesn't it? He certainly does. He's got to turn around and say, hey, listen, this is a football game that we're in. We're taking control of the ball on the ground. If we keep on going like that and, and they don't make their adjustments, we can win this football game. But emotion has got to be on the side of Oregon right now. This game was rated pick them all week. Looks like somebody knew what they were talking about. Have it, and you know, like they say, winning's a habit. So I think that's the reason I have the drive. The Southwest Conference. We're educating today's young people to be America's leader. I'll give you one that's amazing. In that second quarter, Oregon kept the ball 12 of 15 minutes. They had 32 of the 38 snaps. They have a huge edge on the ground. Tech, likewise, big edge through the air. Told the yards about even. And one thing that that halftime stats does not show is the emotion has gone back to Oregon. They now feel that they can win this football game. They have not been taken out of it, and they are in this football game. 13-13, when we have the start of the second half, It'll be Oregon kicking off to Texas Tech when we come back. Salim, for a high performance, rely on the Tiger. By Diet Dr. Pepper. By Coors Light. By Texas Farm Bureau. And by Ford and your local Ford dealers. Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe and Eugene, 13-13 as we get set for the start of the second half. It was 3-3 after one quarter. And despite that enormous edge in ball control in the second quarter in favor of Oregon, it's still tied. Tech anticipating receiving the opening kick from Tommy Thompson to start this third quarter. And you would love to have been a fly on the wall in these locker rooms. What a contrast in locker rooms. I can promise you that in Texas Tech, they were saying, we need to take control of this football game. We're letting it drift away. We need to come out offense, run the ball down the field and score. In Oregon's locker room, they're saying, hey, it may be the end of bad luck duck, or bad duck luck, or whatever it is. <laughs> Thompson's ready and sends one very high down to Saul a yard deep. Great coverage. Boy, they were ready for Tracy Saul that time. And the first man to greet him was Grady O'Connor. After a return to the 12 yard line, 13 yards for Saul. Robert Hall, after a fairly effective first half, 156 yards through the air, much of that on the 65 yard hook up to Hill. 9 of 15 with a touchdown and an interception. Not much on the ground for Robert Hall, though, as they, they appeared to be pretty well prepared to deal with his scramble. Well, everyone thought coming into this game that Tech would be able to control the ball on the ground because Oregon had not stopped teams on the ground, but they only had 44 yards rushing. Have we seen this before? Incomplete. A little behind Lloyd Hill. He had to reach back over his shoulder, or over the outside shoulder. Where if Hall had laid it over the inside shoulder, he might have gone 88 yards. Now, the Tech must that we talked about when we came on the air, they haven't done number one. Well, they certainly haven't. Bam, Bam Morris has not scored. The thrill to Lloyd Hill, he's got four receptions for 115 yards. And uh, Danny O'Neill is 9 of 12. That's pretty significant completion ratio. Bam Morris carried seven times for only 26 yards in the first half. Receiver out of the backfield this time and drag for a loss at the nine with a flag down a late flag inside the five yard line. Jeff Cummins leading the celebration. And it's holding Tech. Tough decision here. Do you take the down or do you take the yardage. If you take the yardage they're almost assuredly going to punt from in the end zone. If providing they obviously don't make the first down on the next play. But if you take the play, the play was for no yards. I think you take the play and bring up third down. Falling, offense, penalties declined, third down. 
we can perhaps see this going to be on the left of your screen see if we see where the where the play is the hole right there that's what they called the holding call hmm. okay Ronnie seals guilty of the hold and it's third down and 13. They go for a haul, they don't get it. And he's lucky again that he didn't get that one picked off. It was intended for Daryl Mitchell, but there were four green jerseys perilously close to the ball. Well, it was a good pass, but there was not enough delivery on the ball. He kind of floated the ball in the middle. Watch again, he doesn't get his feet down. When he tries to avoid the pressure from his right, he gets outside now. He's throwing off balance. It's all arm. He doesn't get anything into it. And the ball just keeps the signs kind of just floats out there. You're right. He was very fortunate he didn't get an interception there. Pretty good kick by King. Harris, fastest man of the duck roster. To the 31. And the Ducks are in business after a 45-yard punt is returned, 23 yards. Zach Thomas bringing down Harris. Danny O'Neill set up to try to break the 13-13 tie in the first half, 9 of 12, mostly short stuff for 99 yards. I mean, in this situation, one of the things that Rich Brooks will tell you is, I want my quarterback to make good decisions. This is the time for O'Neill to make good decisions. Ed Wiley left, Harris right, play action. Once Harris deep, and broken up in the end zone by guess who, Gracie Saul. Harris had a step on Wiley, the cornerback, and as he has done for four solid years, Saul made the play. Saul in the safety position comes across to react to break up that play. There's the quarterback going, oh, I think he's got it. No, he doesn't have it. And Saul won't get credit for a deflection there, but he should. He's a center fielder. He's sitting back there reading the eyes of the quarterback and reacting quickly to wherever the ball is thrown. Second and 10, Burwell. Very effective off tackle all day for Sean Burwell with a 25-yard line where Sean Jackson makes the stop. First half, Burwell, 13 carries, 72 yards, and now up near 80 yards. Third down and five, Oregon. And I saw Jackson go over to the official that time and say, I'm getting held. That's, <laughs> he walked over there with his hands out, and that is the, stas the classic pose for a lineman. I'm getting held. O'Neal not pressured much all day until now, and he'll go down at the 29-yard line. Steve Hoffman joined by Harry Dias to sack Danny O'Neal. You see, now they're shedding those blocks. Again, That's those are the adjustments that are made at halftime. You tell those linemen, don't lock up with them. Offensive linemen love you to lock up. That's just a pushing battle. You need to shed them like Hoffman did that time, get penetration, make the quarterback move around. So they lose four, and it's fourth down time for Thompson. He will attempt a 47-yarder. And plenty of leg, and good. A career-long effort for Thompson. He breaks the tie, 12.32 to go in the third, Oregon by three. You've driven these streets a thousand times. But tonight, there's something different. Tonight, you're using Exxon 93 Supreme gasoline for a cleaner engine, smooth acceleration, and a full 93 octane. Rely on Exxon Supreme. Gotta be kidding. Woo. What's in is out, what's out is in. So many trends make my poor head spin. Don't sell me good taste, I know I taste good. While the best things always. 
The Golden Palomino was a two-time All-American in the mid-60s. He still ranks third all-time in the league for all-purpose yards. Tommy Thompson's kick will be down by Tracy Saul, and the Raiders take it at their 20, trailing by a 16 to 13 count. Thompson saying, I'm comfortable up to about 47 yards, and uh, sure enough, he proved that that would have been good well beyond 50. But the Raider defense doing a nice job of stiffening after the Ducks had been set up at the 32 yard line of Tech. They settled for only three and lead 16 13. This has been a big time formation for the Raiders all day. Three wideouts, right, one left. They stretch that defense. This time incomplete is hauled in halftime to set his shoulders and fire correctly to him. Surprisingly, Hall didn't call off that play at that time. He saw the two backers up in the line and they were going to blitz, but he thought he could avoid the pressure, get outside, but he didn't. He's usually pretty good at making those what they call checks on the line. So an adjustment this time by Oregon defensively. Thinking, well, we're not going to cover everybody. We probably can't cover Hill, so let's get to Hall instead. And it worked for second and ten. Same look. Looking the other way and caught by Donald Marshall. His first grab of the day. Good for a first down to the 35. Well, give a big pat on the back to the offensive line that time of Tech, gave, giving Robert Hall a lot of time to sit back there. If you're an offensive lineman, what you want to do is you want to bounce those defensive players around in front of you. Marshall, as you can see, is very slow getting up after the reception. Let's take another look at that offensive line. Let's watch the penetration that does not occur. Bounce him around, lock up, give that quarterback time. He just sits back in that pocket. He's got a lot of time to look up, finds Marshall on a little curl inside. Marshall took a pretty good hit right there. When he came down, I think he fell on top of the ball. Well, very gingerly trying to stand up as the trainers check on him. Marshall a great sprinter as a ninth grader was state 100 meter champion in Grand Prairie. They would love for him to develop as a counterpoint to Hill. We talk about Hill's ability to stretch defenses and if Marshall can become a week in week out threat I mean forget about covering both of them. Then you can't double cover anyone. Well, their wideouts have been open. Uh, throughout the game they Robert Hall just hasn't had a lot of time to sit back there and find him not like he did this past time but he needs to find Hill more often he needs to find Marshall he needs to swing him out of the backfield find Bruce Hill coming out of the backfield this time the trips are wide left bottom of your screen as we send Tony Miller in motion and give it to Morris for not much on the draw play perhaps one if that Salila Malapai. The junior nose guard from Honolulu made the tackle. Raycom pleased to welcome again this week our viewers tuning in on Prime Network and the nationwide family of Prime's regional sports cable networks. 16-13 Oregon, 11 minutes and 41 seconds in the third quarter from Eugene. Eric Castle, the third team All-American free safety, whose strength apparently is all the way back after battling Mono coming back a couple of weeks early. Flag down as he goes deep for Lloyd Hill and caught to the 24 if the play stands. Get up, Rob. And Robert Hall took a shot that time and he is down. The completion to the duck 24 yard line is good for 38 yards should the penalty be on Oregon. But of major concern right now is Paul's condition and they'll bring it back and mark off against Tech. Well, it's a legal motion along the line. 
But I think more concern as you said is against Robert Hall looking at him. Every player on Tech's sideline turned and looked at him when he went down. But Hill did a nice job using that body to protect the ball. Well he will jog off and we'll see Jason Clemens for how long we don't know. Word on Donald Marshall he just had the wind knocked out after falling on the ball and will return. Here's what happened to Robert Hall. Well, he reads the blitz quickly sets up and he just throws this ball up but he's going to get hit right there. What we used to call the short ribs. Boy if there's one guy who causes everybody to skip a beat in their heart that's the guy but he appears to be all right. Clemens is a junior from Roswell New Mexico who has had very little time and he hands off to Bruce Hill attempting to spin back to the line of scrimmage hit hard by Terrell Edwards the outside linebacker and it'll be third down and 14 and Hall's on the sideline saying let me in coach I want to go back in and there he goes one play for Clemens and right back in is Hall and everybody in Lubbock can breathe a deep sigh of relief. They come after him and Cummins will wrap him up. Just outside pressure by a fast lineman, Jeff Cummings. He comes from the outside. No one touched him. He just came right around and leveled old Robert Hall. And, and the penalties is, keep going. There is movement, the Raiders say, by the Ducks prior to the snap. All start, offense, five yards, and two fourth down. They could say so, but they would be wrong. Here's the sack again. Look in the outside. You see, no one even touches Jeff Cummins. He just comes all the way around, gets the arm on him, and once you get those big hands on him, you grab that jersey, it just sling him down. So now fourth and 24 for Robert King. And this one goes straight up and straight down. And bounces off a duck, and did the Raiders jump on it? Every Give team. us five or six oh. minutes here before they unpile every, it, and maybe every, we'll know. Dave, every team has a call when it's a short kick. Raider Get ball. Away. How about that? Every team has a, kick, a call. Whatever it is, it's fire, fire, get away from the ball. Every team has that. You practice it on a short kick. You do not let a ball hit you. They, if they all, all they have to do is fair catch it, and he's going to get the ball inside the 50-yard line. And Anthony Wiley hops on it for Tech. Watch it again. Now, right here, you're yelling, fair catch, fair catch, get away from the ball, and he runs right into his own man. And there's the ball, bam, right off his own man. Tech dives on it. They have got great field position. That was 48. Rich Rule, who inexplicably turned his back on the ball and uh, had it bounce off of him into the hands of Anthony Wiley. And remember on fourth and long in the first half where Dykes sent him out there going for it deep in their own end. They drew the nose tackle offside. That continued a scoring drive. We'll see if this has a similar result. They've really done a job bottling up Van Morris. He hasn't bothered him really one bit so far. Edwards brings it down. Second and long. Lots of second and longs when they've gone on the ground. Well, the play that's worked the best for Texas Tech today has been that play action play where he fakes that run in there and comes back and looks downfield with the pass. When Brooks talked about all the various weapons that the Red Raiders pose, he, he first of all talked about Morris. And, and so many teams in the Southwest think about Hall, they think about Lloyd Hill. And because Morris came on rather late last year, he's still kind of creeping into the consciousness. But not in Rich Brooks' case. He obviously has the defense designed, first of all, to stop Van Morris and set up a lot of these second and longs. So far, it's, it's really working well for the Ducks. Paul, quarterback draw. First down 
at the duck 42 to half yard line. What Robert Hall is trying to do there is get some momentum going, get some life in this offense. If their offense does not capitalize on a situation like this, when you get a big play, you lose all that emotion. This is quarterback draw all the way. He drops back about seven yards, lets those big offensive linemen turn him, and then he finds the seam and picks up the first down. Doesn't look like his ribs are bothering him at all. Or whatever it was, obviously not. Tech trailing, 8.43 in the third, 16-13 Oregon. They look for Hill, and this time O'Berry got the deflection. If Hall lays that one up and lets Hill run under it at six. Well, I watched O'Berry coming off the line that time, and he jammed Lloyd Hill very well on the line. It's on the left of your screen, and you'll see Hill break, break free late, but the Berry gets his hand in there and knocks the ball away. But you were right, it's thrown behind him. You need to lead Lloyd Hill with that pass. Oregon was warmed up for this one by facing Bill Walsh's passing attack at Stanford last week. He burned a few times today, however, second and ten. Gerald Mitchell, the motion man, draw play. Bruce Hill read perfectly by Farwell from linebacker. And Bruce it'll be Hill third and long. Rodriguez also coming up to help Paul Rodriguez from safety. And Joe Farwell all the way back emotionally this year. He says uh, after the lingering illness and finally the death last year of his father from pancreatic cancer, he absolutely lost all desire to play football, which is very understandable. But he has worked through that, and he's back and ready to enjoy his senior year this year. Incomplete for Bruce Hill. Fourth down. However, because of the punt situation, they can now stick the Ducks way back and tear it and in. That's still, even though the Raiders apparently won't cash it in for points, that still can loom as a very costly mistake for Oregon. What Robert King wants to do on this ball is just pooch it over the line. You don't have to, have to kick it real, real high. If you're going to kick it real, real high, you let your defense, you let your team coming down catch the ball or down it inside the 10-yard line. Or the other, the other method that you can do is just pooch it over the line of scrimmage, let it roll down inside the 10, 15 yard line. They come after him, and uh, there will be a late flag for roughing the punter. Can you oh. believe this? If I'm Rich Brooks on the sideline, I'm saying right now, don't come over on my side of the field. <laughs> whoever complete, whoever. No, no, no. One. He's saying, come here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the guy that roughed him is. Is going oh. as far away from his head coach as he can. It came with the outside pressure, and King kept that leg in the air just long enough to get spun around. This could be running into rather than roughing, and it's a difference because of running into is only five yards. But see, it's still a mistake. Running into the kicker, five yard penalty, defense, repeat fourth down. Watch to the right of your screen. If you're a punter, you just leave that leg up. He runs right into him. Donovan Moore, 22. The guilty party for Oregon. Well, that ball was going to be on about the 16-yard line. See, now you're a little bit iffy. You've got... That would be a long field goal try, obviously. But, uh, the ball was going to be on the 16-yard line for Oregon. Let's see what that penalty really amounts to. The wind appears to have picked up quite a bit, and he's kicking into it. Headed for the corner. This could be nice. Oh, wow. How about perfect? <laughs> How about perfect by Robert King? He pins the Ducks at the one foot line with 738 in the third. We'll return after these messages from Coors Light. Silver Thunder! Silver Thunder! Ooh, silver time, silver line girl in the silver suit looks so fine. Looks so fine. 
silver bottle, silver top, silver fish, silver wish, come from here, right from here. About 50 years ago, folks out here needed help with insurance. And since Farm Bureau's whole purpose was to help, they organized insurance companies. Now, from the outset, these companies were committed to being conservative. And the result has been a tradition of strength and stability respected across the country. Now, through the years, Farm Bureau has grown and added lots of innovative services, but that stability never changed. And stability is why you can trust Farm Bureau today. In Odessa, a remodeled kitchen turned into the McLaren's new family room. In Corpus Christi, a new minivan made the halls a little more popular with their friends. And in Austin, an additional room allowed Mark Gonzalez to put his father in the best possible home, his own. Nations Bank loan specialists have helped people all across Texas with loans for home improvements, loan refinancing, and car loans. Come see how Nations Bank can give you the power to make a difference in your life. Well, no one will accuse Robert King of being the eccentric that Mark Bounds, the All-American, was, who graduated last year, but uh, Bounds could not have possibly nailed one any better than King just did. He certainly could not have. O'Neill and the Ducks, a foot away from their own goal line, they go to Juan Shedrick, the fullback, and he gives them a little breathing room out to their five-yard line. Big 228-pounder from San Rafael, California, brought down by Brady Field. And a true freshman Marcus Coleman, who last week returned an interception, 65 yards for a clinching touchdown against Wyoming. There are a few true freshmen that Spike Dykes is really excited about this year. He's one of them. Round again, Ricky Whittle spelling Sean Burwell will spin for the first down to the 12, and just like that, they're almost out of harm's way. Field and Wiley on the hit. That kick could have been the play of the game because if you hold them down there, you're going to get great field position. But they've just picked up 11 yards on two runs, and you're thinking they're going to run. Heck has not been able to stop that run up front all day long. I think they miss Steve Carr a lot more than they think they miss him. Boy, it looks like it, doesn't it? Oregon mixing two offensive lines back and forth to good results as well. Everybody's fresh. Whittle to the 18. They kept him and Burwell fresh. Quincy White, who had such a productive first half, makes the hit here. And the Ducks just burrow their heads down and march out of the shadow of their own goal. This is the same play. Knock everybody down. You can't come across the front of that. You've got to come up underneath, and that's Quincy White's tackle. He's got to play behind that blocker, come up underneath, and make that tackle in the backfield. What Tech is not able to do on first down, Oregon's doing very well, and that's setting up second and short. In this case, second and three flags prior to the snap. And the Raiders applauding what they think was early movement by Oregon's offensive line. So the Ducks back up five. Meanwhile, next week, our Exxon Southwest Conference Game of the Week will take us to Ombi Stadium in Dallas for the matchup between Pat Sullivan's TCU Horn Frogs and Tom Rossley's SMU Mustangs. Hope you can join us for that. Check your local listings for TCU and SMU. Second down and eight. Quick toss. Deadweiler out of Wiley's tackle. First down. Flag down. A late flag after Deadweiler had managed his 24-yard line. And all the Ducks are saying against Texas Tech. I thought it was a late mask, face mask penalty. Remember this drive. Had them on inside the one-yard line. Great field position. You're going to get the ball back at midfield. All you have to do is stop them. Perhaps we can see on the tail end of this tackle. This is just a slip screen out to the flat. It's a reaction play, and what you do is you hope the defensive back doesn't get there quick enough. Good block up front. 
That's not a face mask. Let's see it right there is the face mask. That's on Donnie Brooks. Ricky Riddle, look out. Riddle, Raider territory. Little water bug brought down by Marcus Coleman, who may have prevented six. 5'9", 180-pound freshman. Well, Whittle's made some great choices today, and this is another one. They, they knock him out. It's again that trap inside. The, li the inside linebackers are tied up on their blocks. They're not shedding those blocks, and Riddle, Whittle takes them all the way down inside the 45-yard line. Meanwhile, Notre Dame continues to pile it on Michigan State and Stanford, which was close in the first half, not close anymore. Danny O'Neill. First and ten at the Red Raider 47 yard line. A call on Whittle for two. Got to be impressed with Oregon's patience on this drive. Certainly do. And if I was running the ball this this well against Texas Tech, I'd just continue to run it. Because now that opens up the pass too. Because you fake that play action in there, and everybody's getting beaten along the line, and you start to come up real hard, and all of a sudden he pulls that ball back out, and bam, he's got the big one. So it really compounds the pressure on the defense. This for a guy who carried four times for 16 total yards in their first two games. Emerging as more than a credible backup for Sean Burwell this afternoon. O'Neill will hang this one up for Anthony Jones, deflected by Coleman. Who's probably going to be angry with himself. He didn't pick that one off. Good read on it, came over and closed perfectly. Didn't quite bring it in, but bring up third and eight. Our Ford updates as we look around the Southwest Conference. Baylor blowing away Utah State, who they haven't played since 1961 in the Gotham Bowl. They used to play it at the old Polo Grounds, and the Merlin Olsen, Jim Turner, Utah State team took on the Don Truel, Ronnie Bolden Baylor team in 61. Houston is deadly at the Dome. They beat up on Illinois today, and Rice in a game at Duke with proceeds benefiting hurricane victims. Big third down call. Deadweiler dropped it, and he should have had six. Might have heard footsteps from Donnie Brooks, but that, that's not really any kind of an excuse. That needs to be caught. Well, there's no excuse on the play, but I think he looked over and saw Donnie Brooks closing on him real fast. He's on the outside. It's just a go pattern. Now he's wide open. Now watch to see if he looks over and sees Donnie Brooks coming. He might have. You know, another factor here is he's looking right into the sun. The way the sun sets here, it's in the near left-hand corner. You can see how the shadows are casting. Where he's looking, that, that might possibly have been right into the sun. Saul standing at his 10-yard line. Thompson, again, really nails a nice one. But a touchback. And with 3.58 to go in the third quarter. Good job by Oregon digging out of the hole. And the Raiders take over at their 20. On Southwest Airlines, friends fly free for business, too. For example, if Dunn buys a ticket, Bradstreet flies free. Buy one round-trip ticket at Southwest Airlines' regular low, unrestricted fare, and your friend flies with you free. So if Bush buys a ticket, Quail flies free. Or if Clinton buys a ticket, Gore flies free. Friends fly free for business. Only on Southwest Airlines, just plain smart. Something to think about if you throw trash on Texas highways. Somebody up there is going to be watching. And you don't want to mess with the Texas Confederate Air Force. So don't mess with Texas. Ask anyone who's driven. Good afternoon in Eugene. Dave Barnett, Dave Rowe, 358 in the third. Robert Hall goes to work from his 20-yard line. <laughs> Trying to get Morris established as a threat, and Farwell with the ankle tackle. Morris had to be thinking about breaking that one real close to it. 
and a pickup of five yards. He will, if he keeps after it, probably break one. Last week, Wyoming held him to 18 yards in the first half. He finished with a career-high 107. The week before, 103 against Oklahoma. You rush for 100 against Oklahoma, you're a threat. Ball just two for six through the year the second half. Morris again, left side, stacked up for a pickup of two. Ernest Jones made the first contact, and it'll be third down and three. And that's a between down. You don't know whether to run or whether to pass. It's almost it's almost one of those downs where you're, you're just indecisive as to what you're going to do. I like to see Morris run up the middle. I think he's a better up the middle runner. I know he has the speed to get outside, but Oregon has shut that off with their corners. They've come up and forced him inside, and when he has to slow down to change direction, he hasn't picked up the big yardage. Option pitch. They were ready. Joe Farwell. That's just a great read. That's the first option pitch we've seen from Tech this afternoon, and it didn't bother the senior tackling leader from Los Gatos, California. So Dyke's hoping for another big kick from Robert King. As the Ducks play for the return this time, Ronnie Harris will chase it down and go backwards. Great punt coverage. Harris on the return at the 37. First man there, Sean Banks for Tech. But what made that pitch not work is that they forced it so quickly. Watch how quickly Robert Hall has to get rid of the ball when he comes down the line. Now, he has to throw it out. Now there's no fake. Right along the line, Joe Farwell, 51. Bam, he takes him down. This is Farwell again, steps up now. Run the line, you've got the pitch man. Keep him in front of you. No game. You don't play it any better than that. Well, you pointed out probably the key was how quickly Hall had to pitch. He couldn't stretch it out and, and become a running threat himself. So the Ducks still up three. Burwell's turn to tail back. Burwell to the Raider, 48. Saul has to make another saving tackle. If I'm Oregon right now, I'm saying to myself, I'm going to run the football every time until you stop me. The only time that Tech was able to stop them on that last series was when they went to the pass. This is just a good decision. They run him on by the play. Now he's back against the grain. That's big yardage for the first down. They slip it inside to Shedrick this time. First Watch man Shedrick through. Down to the Brought down by Steve Hoffman. And they're doing this without their top tight end. Vince Ferry, who had a couple of first half catches, bruised his ribs. He will not return today. For Texas Tech, Ben Kirkpatrick is still playing despite a sprained left ankle. They weren't sure whether he would return, but he has. And we're down to the final minute Again, 20 of the third quarter. Out. As time rolls on, Gotta figure that favors Oregon. It certainly does. They've I mean, not, not just because yes. they're ahead, but psychologically. Oh, psychologically has a big bearing on this football game. They thought they'd be out of it by now. But their fears have not been realized. Burwell will not have the first. Not quite to the 40. White and Hoffman on the tackle. Steve Hoffman on the tackle. It becomes a big third down. Now, psychologically, it's the Raider defense that needs a big boost. Well, they've been back on their heels the last two quarters. Remember, Oregon was able to grind it out to 32 plays out of 38 total plays in the second quarter. Basketball season may be a few months away, but now is the time to get good seats to the 1993 postseason classic at Reunion again in Dallas, March 12th through the 14th. 1-800-800-SWC-8. To order your tickets now. On the slant end, should have been caught. Deadweiler didn't look for it, and he's hearing the boot. That's the second possible touchdown that Deadweiler has let slip away. What an excellent pass by O'Neill. He actually hit him in the hand while he was running. That's an easy catch. Well, remember, when he, when he transferred from junior college, they redshirted him because he wasn't ready, mentally or physically. Big mental mistake here. Look how wide open he is. He never looked back for the football, never put his other hand up. He was surprised that it was coming to him. 
So the Ducks apparently will be turned away in Red Raider territory. What a bad snap, and here come the Raiders. Good job by Thompson getting it off. Angles for the corner. Not quite. That is outstanding work under pressure by Thompson. When you're the punter and you get that ball and it hits the ground, first thing you have to do is think about picking it up, not falling on it. So you pick it up, the first thing you do after that is you look up and you see what the problem is. You've got him running down your throat, but he did an excellent job of getting it off. So one more play for Texas Tech, and then they'll turn around. They'll have the wind in the fourth quarter, but they'll have the the disadvantage of receivers having to look back into the sun which has cost Oregon receivers a couple of times in this third quarter and I looked down on the sideline and Spike Dykes was all over Lucio for not rushing Bruce Hill to the 22 and that will be the end of quarter number three they smell an upset and an end to an eight game losing streak in Eugene Oregon for Oregon, it has been as close as expected, but it's Oregon leading 16-13 as we begin the fourth quarter, and Hall slips at his 15. Bring up third and 15. Chad Cota was bearing down on him on a safety blitz. Safety blitz all the way from the outside. Had plenty of time to step up, but his feet just went out from under him. He's dropped down there for about a five-yard loss. I tell you what, we, we talked at the outset about how there's a layer of sand just underneath this Omni turf. The sand, I don't know if you can see on your screen, but it is starting to creep up onto the surface, and we can see from here where there would be some slippery areas. A lot of time for Hall to go deep, and not quite for Marshall, but Marshall may have an argument that he was held up by Jackson. I thought he, he got bumped. For the ball, there was a bump there. I really did, too. I thought he got bumped on the play. Donald Marshall fighting back from what turned out to be bruised lower ribs in that third quarter injury. Ball right on the money by Hall, but Marshall couldn't bring it in, and it'll be a punting situation for the leading punter in the conference after two weeks. Wind at his back, end over end. Harris, 41 yard line. Good block against Wickware. Harris stood up at the 42, but again, Oregon taking over in Texas Tech territory. And there's only so many times you can put your defense back on their heels like that. And they've done it three times in a row. Three times in a row they have given Oregon great field position, and Oregon has not been able to capitalize on it. This again, 41 yard line, you start your drive, you're almost in field goal territory. Quick run through the Dr. Pepper College Roundup. Tennessee blows away Florida. USC upsets Oklahoma. Houston avenges their big loss last year to Illinois. Sean Burwell inside the 40 on first down. Tackle by Stephen Gaines, the nose tackle. Florida State a winner. Michigan a big winner, and Georgia even bigger. Baylor into the win column for the first time, and UCLA holds off BYU in Provo, 17 to 10. Annie O'Neill trying to engineer the Ducks' first victory since a win over New Mexico State last year in a three and eight season. After two consecutive bowl years, play action over the middle for Deadweiler, and this time he hangs on for a first down to the 25. Again, excellent line blocking up front. So Neil.